Hey y'all, it's Betsy and Mom from Happily Ever After Center, and we're back with another garden tour. So we did so much work at Mom's house last year that we did a fall garden tour for y'all. Not even of the backyard, just of the front yard, because we did most of the backyard off camera, but we did almost all of the front yard on camera somehow. So now that it is spring, we thought we'd give you a little look. Even though our houses are only about 10, 15 miles apart, mom's yard seems to be a, a week or two further into spring than my house. Everything here has been leafing out and flowering and growing uh, a couple weeks ahead of mine. So we're going to start while I still have tulips we missed mom's daffodils. They all bloomed. I will see if I have a picture. And we will put those up on the screen. They were very pretty. Obviously, um, you know, a hundred daffodils in a garden this size isn't quite as many as you would really need for a full like show, but you can see like there was some here, there was some over here somewhere they were every five or ten feet and they were very clean we love the little yellow pots of spring um as well as the azaleas while they still have blooms they are starting to go out of bloom as well so we are going to start over on that side and we will come all the way over the arbor mom went a little crazy last week putting in all kinds of new things on um, both annuals and perennials because uh, last year a lot of what we did was just clean the beds out and get them ready for plants and then we did put in some perennials last year put in a few perennials and some bushes and trees and then for the most part she really just put super tuna visca bubble gum and <laughs> proven winners truffle pink gum frina because both of those plants get huge and give you a lot of blooms. And in her garden, most of them are coming back. So we're gonna see what they do, but let's start over there by the driveway where she took out the old beautiful magnolia tree that was dying and uh, we'll work our way over. Okay. Ready, Freya? Freya. You ready, Biddy? Let's go. Let's go, Freya, Freya. Come on, Biddy, Biddy. Come on, Freya. Come on, Freya, Freya. Come on, Freya. So right here is where the old magnolia tree was. It was 80 years old. It went all the way up over the power lines, but the power company cut it. You can watch that video if you want to see them taking it out. But we have an azalea. This is from the original bed. Mm -hmm. We've got a vitex. We've got some uh, mums and nandina over here, as well as lots of lilies and iris these here and right over here behind the cast iron stove are actually what are those mom those are louisiana iris and, and they they're from from my grandmother mom's grandma my great grandmother's house and they are a very pretty yellow when they bloom so that will be fun to show you then you can see here mom's super tunia vista bubblegum coming back and blooming already. Like, look how big these plants are. And these are technically annuals, but in our zone 8B, they often come back. So they're obviously coming back. Then this is a knockout rose and these are daffodils. So we're trying to decide if we are going to leave them in the ground and see if they'll come back or take them out and chill them. In our zone, they often need to be pre-chilled And if you leave them in the ground, they don't do well. So we're just not sure. Since we only planted 100, we're thinking we might risk it this year. Um, just not sure. But then mom has planted a few butterfly bushes. These are small two by threes. Um, they're very pretty purple blooms. She liked my bigger ones, but she wanted some tiny ones. So we found those at the nursery and she had to have them. And you can see here the truffle pink gumfrina coming back and her dogwood tree. 
This is a pink dogwood. And it is blooming for the first time. So that's exciting. Oh, I didn't know where you went, but Freya was escaping. Then on this side, we have another super tunia coming back. And then mom planted some uh, Dusty Miller around a lot of her daffodil foliage. So as that daffodil foliage dies down, the Dusty Miller will come up. She's got some cone flowers. It looks like this one's not loving life for some reason. Looked fine last week. Another knockout. Ooh. This foxtail fern's coming back. We planted those last year, and only about half of them are really liking it. It's kind of frustrating. And then you watch this plant, the loquat tree and her crepe myrtle tree, and they are both doing fabulous. So we replaced the one big magnolia with one, two, three smaller trees that will, you know, grow at different heights and rates and have different canopies but none of which that should get too big to interfere with the power lines. Although once all three are full size, they should still give this area a fair amount of shade. But around the corner isn't too much on this side yet. While this is going to be a full, you know, garden bed from all sides, she ha you just really started doing this side right after you got the loquat tree in right mom so you've got another butterfly bush do you know if you're supposed to deadhead it as I it think, dies i think we do i'm guessing you should deadhead it so that the new yeah. blooms have place to come up but there are there are new buds coming up so if you deadhead it you'll definitely get another show yeah. and then this rose this is the same rose that i have growing Beside my house that I have winding up my porch now, it was supposed to be a bush. And you can see mine is winding up my house. Mom had to put an obelisk on it, even though it is literally supposed to be a bush. So obviously it has been mislabeled. <laughs> it is not a bush. It is a climber. And you know, so mom just moved it up here for a little interest on this side. And this is my favorite of all mom's azaleas is just petering out. And you can see it just has these itty bitty little pink blossoms that are so pretty. And it'll stay green for the whole season, right? Just won't have oh, yeah. blooms. Bush there, yeah. Yeah, we can see the leaves are coming in. Yeah, so it, it will still be green it just only has pink blooms in the spring and you had like three or four of these the yeah they didn't make it taking out the big magnolia yeah so let's go ahead and go along the front here right so last year we put in this path we actually interplanted it with what did we do flocks creeping flocks and it just all died between the heat of the summer. We had a heat wave right after that, and they, they moved everything to take out that tree. And so we're going to have to replant it. That'll be fun. But under this, this is a camellia, right? Yeah. Is that how you say it? Camellia? camellia. Mm -hmm. And they bloom in the spring or in the fall? In the winter. In the winter. They're they have finished. beautiful red blooms. Yes. And then underneath it, you've put what these look like, mums? These are some mums from last year. And in our zone, mums will typically come back. Yes, they were just mums I put out for the fall. They were in, in that this, pot. I believe. Yeah. And then Gotta I take those some chairs to the booth. Hostas in here. And they Sun hostas, yet. they haven't. But hostas are one of those things that typically come up last. Yeah. So we are not, I'm not, worried. not giving up hope. We're just not convinced they're still alive. And then some more Dusty Miller, some ferns. There's another Nandina, but this is a new one yes. you just planted, whereas the ones behind us have been here for those longer are, than we have. Yeah, those were here. And then you just planted these. These are a type of salvia. Uh-huh. They're called April Night. April Night. And, and they're perennial. They're perennial. So they're supposed to get tall, right? Yes. How tall do they get? 
12 to 15 inches high, 12 to 18 inches wide. So about a foot tall, foot yeah. and a half. That'll be pretty. Which is kind of nice. Yes. And then we've got lots of iris, another butterfly bush. You started asking for like three of those and now you've put in like five. Five. I think I put five. And then all of these pups, these are the lantana, right? Yes, the little pups of green are the lantana. And those are yellow lantana. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and we put that in last year and they're coming back. They're coming back. And you can see them here, one back there, one over here, one back there, one back by that white. And she uses it a bit more like ground cover, ground cover yeah. than necessarily like a flower. And then another set of mums she had one two one three this one died yeah. and then here one two three are pincushion pin plants these are the pink mist scabiosa that i just put in by my front door you'll find a lot of times that if we go to a nursery and i buy three of something there is a second set of three somewhere, somewhere at mom's house not always but a lot of the times we like the same plants and we're obviously in the same zone so just ends up happening yes and then another nandina i see i put in nandina everywhere last year and now mom's putting a bunch in but i put mine in because you had a bunch in your backyard that I were did. doing so well so it's a cycle well especially it's, really it's very green a lot in the summer but it it reds up over the fall and winter and gives you some color when there's not a lot of color in the garden. Now I have back here, I have some black eyed Susans, the Goldstrom Rep Rutabecchia. So those will be tall They'll and be yellow. Taller. They'll be about 20 inches tall. And I don't really do yellow, but yellow is one of mom's favorite colors. Yes, we've got a lot of stuff on the porch to go to the booth right now. More yellow, these are daylilies. Yes, they are getting ready. Yeah, look at all. Look at all these blooms. Maybe next week or the week after. Probably while we're gone. Yeah. And then mom's blue hydrangeas are just going to town. Have you put your soil acidifier out? No. Yeah, so they may be pink this they year. Pink. <laughs> and then she has a gardenia and. That's just a... Whatever this is, it's just a bush. Euonymus. Euonymus. And it's that variegated color. I like that variegated. And this is a bitty plant. Bitty, bitty. She moves. She's bitty. not a stationary plant. Bitty, what are you doing? All right, let's go to the other side, Bitty. You want to lead the way? Come on, Come on Bitty. So this side I is... I put my pots out yet. No, she was bringing some of her indoor pots out to get some sun, and they were all like... Sun die quickly. We don't know why. We had such a bad winter. I lost all my ferns that were on my porch. So I'm yeah. trying to see if That's they're going to back, back here. They but, normally sit up here in front yeah. of the rockers. So this side is similar. A, a similar, but not symmetrical. Like they say, what with eyebrows, you want them to be sisters, not twins. Okay. <laughs> is that what you're doing with your porch? I have it very similar. Her actual porch is very traditional when it's not covered in antiques for the booth. But, so we've got daylilies, got the same hydrangea, euonymus, and gardenia. And then lantana. And then she starts doing a little bit different. Black eyed Susan's back there by those. Iris. Betsy did so well with her Gara last year. I wanted to get some. Yeah, I love that Gara. I want to put more in since the three from... I've had three for two years that are not coming back this year. And I loved them so much, I put three more in. The new three have come back, but the old three haven't. <laughs> so, but they're so pretty and they're like... They look like butterflies. They're very fairy-like. I like all fairy and whimsical things, so... They look like butterflies. Yeah. But mom got a short variety, so hers only get like 18, 18 inches, whereas mine get more like two to three feet tall and have very, like the, the foliage is the same, but the bloom stalks on mine come up much higher. And I've planted them around the base of my climbing rows. So from here, 
Are these English daisies? Shasta daisies. Oh, I was looking at English daisies. I didn't get them. And then a knockout rose. This is one of the ones we transplanted from my house. And it's beautiful. And it's, it's coming back. I cut it back to about in. a foot high, foot and a half, and it is filling in. It's going to be nice and bushy. I probably need to cut mine back. I haven't this year, and they're yeah, string beans. Finish cutting them the rest of them back back. And then another set of that same blue night, nope. April night, April night uh, salvia. And you can see the remnants of a daffodil. And the dogs think this brick path is oh, just the the, their little walkway, huh? See Petunias in there? They look like it. But your grass is in the middle, aren't Well, show them everything back there while you're back there, because it's all little. These are the lupins, Betsy. So we started those from seed so in, in the, the milk, milk jugs. jugs. And they're doing really well here. Your leaves are... Almost bigger than my leaves. That one's pretty big. Yeah. I had five and only three are doing super well. The other two are pretty well. And then she's got a set of what, four? Four of the set of our pennies. This one is the best. That one is the best. Those two are kind of straggling. But they'll be, they're pretty shaded under this camellia. Camellia, yeah. And so they should do well there. No, we just planted those. So those are the same ones we got at Home Depot that I just planted. I will leave a link to that below. Yeah, they were like and mom's never planted glads in her garden before, but she liked the ones I planted last year. So she got, they're, they're all different jewel tones, like 50, 50 bulbs 50 for $15. Bulbs. They were the best price I've seen on glad bulbs. Like So mom got 150 of them. I only got 100. Um, but with glads, if you're planting them for the first time and you only have one type, you want to succession plant them to have blooms all summer. So we've planted the first half and then we'll plant more when we come back. When we come back. Mom's always weeding something. Yep. Well, and I have this very stubborn vine that comes up in here. Yes, it's awful. And so I try to get it when it's real small, but I had to really get rid of it when I was cleared out this bed. But hopefully my glads, I planted my bulbs. We bought them at the same time. I planted mine a week or two weeks ahead of you and, and they're already growing foliage. Oh yeah. Mine so is. yours will probably be popping through in the next week or so. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And then more moms. More moms. These, Your moms are looking great. They look good. I put those in the ground last year. They Another butterfly bush. My homestead verbena is going insane and blooming already, and mom's look at has died. Doing that. Yeah. And then this stick. <laughs> we'll see what happens. I, I can't tell whether it has buds on it or not. We can't tell if it's alive. Or if it's yeah, dead. Dang. I think it's alive. Because look at this right oh, here. yeah. Look at that. that. That looks pretty bright red right there. That is pretty red. So we're thinking that's buds. Yeah. But this is this is your Japanese maple. maple. And you bought two of these last year at the, yeah, at the farmer's market. Yeah. And they're only supposed to get like maybe four feet tall. They're small ones. And so she wants it to be... Oh, falling over kind of a specimen tree at the front of this swoop huh Betty yep. and on the little rip, rip road. yeah so hopefully it will bloom this year or bloom leaf out leaf out they yeah. don't really bloom they're just a pretty red yeah. leaf so then is this a, a little azalea yeah. I got over at Marvin's just it was on sale I thought oh, I'll buy it it was at the end of the season. If she didn't buy it, I was going to buy it. But I had no money, so this works better. It was like $3. <laughs> and then this is the cart that I sent Mom on Facebook Marketplace because I was going to buy it. And then she bought it. It's 
right. So don't send your mom things you want to buy. She'll swoop in and steal them out from under you. Still working on this part, finishing the bricks. Gonna have to bring the bricks all the way over. And Got a mulch. hydrangea. That was here when I moved. That in. was here. And then bottle brush bush. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you're gonna put in this planter. I don't even know if it's going to stay here. Maybe a fern. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I just... And then all of these azaleas. Is that a camellia? Yes. So and this is a camellia. Azaleas all this the way is a camellia. And then, I mean, mom's house is 100 years old. And these azaleas are. They're way, I mean, they're 12 foot, 15 foot high. Who knows how old they are, but they go all the way around the house. And you can see they're even all the way back behind the house as well. So they're they're beautiful. Red ones on this side. This bush I think I can Yeah, I think that bush died for some reason. I'll put some pictures of when those were in bloom. We took puppy pictures. And then mom just went and got Oh, I found this guy. He was getting a new porch and a new front walk and he had all these bricks and I stopped my car and I said, What are you gonna do with those bricks? He said nothing you want them i said yes so he gave them to me mom's trying to get as many free bricks as possible to finish her walk her path her her border both because she doesn't want to pay for bricks and because you don't you don't want to take old patinaed bricks on one side and pair them with brand new shiny bricks on the other side they all need to be similar a work in progress i just so, kind of put them along the just outline. laying them out i had a hose over there the outline but you can see you know they're all old and they need some work so she's gonna have to come out here with her little chisel, chisel. she she chiseled this side they look great and uh chisel this side so talk about this side i have planter. this is more of a woodland side Drops the pine needle, so it's kind of about pine needle mulch. It was like mulched, mulched, but it was. I had compost in here, but then I put the then the, it just dropped. You just now, can't this stop all it. Came in. This Naturally, all, this is just this is called spiderwort. It just it's like a weed here, but it has a really pretty blue flower, and I like it, so I just left it there. Yeah, um, especially in a woodland area, it looks pretty, and have, the pollinators like it. I have some uh, yellow cone flowers here. They're coming up. And they're both and the coming back. And that's a uh, super tunia. Super tunia came back for me. And I think three I'm, gumfrinas. I'm pretty sure these are gumfrinas. Three truffle of pink gumfrinas. None of my gumfrina is coming back, All but don't worry. Look, if you come out here one day and you just have holes, it was not me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now here's yeah. my favorite part: is we planted a gardenia. And an oak leaf hydrangea, but in between the two, a oh, giant oh, weed came up. Weedy bush came up. And so, at some point, Mom, you're gonna have to come back here. I will. I'll come back and cut and, it off. No, you can't cut it off. It'll just keep coming. You need to dig it out. No, I don't want to, but I'll figure. You out need something. to send Jim or Will out here to dig it out. Yeah, maybe Will. Sorry. And I, I got some Veronica. She's got the good Veronica. The semi-good Veronica and the struggling Veronica around the bird bath. And then some more. Um, Super tunia. And then that's one of the rose bushes from Betsy Cow's. That one I did cut off. It's, it's doing okay. It's, I just cut it off last weekend. So yeah. It's not had a, long, a lot of time to perk off. back up. And then I had some daffodils. Only one bloomed. Yeah. And, and you can see back here where the yellow flags are. These are places we planted more glads, more glads. Yep. in the back and then i have more um day lilies little day lilies and they're full of blah, buds i don't know why that one's full of buds that one's not and then that she's one is, that one's not. planning to put a little path under the arbor back to the bench. bench with more bricks and that bench betsy and her brother gave me for mother's day oh my gosh probably 15 years ago when we were in the colorado 15 years ago, I would have been 16, yeah, 17. That, I have that was before it. Colorado. It was Colorado. I got it. Well, we moved to Colorado in 2004. Two. 
but we moved into the house in 2004, so I wouldn't have given you a bench in the apartment. <laughs> Yes, because that's when I graduated college and moved away. A friend of mine sat on it the whole thing. He was doing fine. He sat on it and it was fine. The dog jumped up there and it went. <coughs> so mom. Added weight of the dog. Yeah. She recut all of it and put new wood on the whole bench. And, and then. And then we put this arbor up last year. We built it. I'll link that below. And oh my gosh, we got this rose. Speak up, mom. We got this rose in New Orleans. It is um, the Peggy Martin rose. Peggy Martin rose. It's the only one, of the only things that survived Hurricane Katrina. So it was under twelve feet of water. Not this specific rose, but yes. the original one that it's named after. And it's named after the lady Peggy Martin, who had her the rose. It was her rose. We planted this last last almost fall. It was the very was tail like end of, of the summer, and, and so it has fall. grown this much it was over like the winter. Years. So we have heard from people online, you know, watching videos that they'll grow, they'll fill in an entire arbor in one season and you have to cut them back. But obviously we, this is our first year with it. I have one. If you watch my March garden tour, I planted mine on my back chain link fence because they're supposed to be great for covering an entire fence. And I want to hide my backyard from my garden. And so if you want to see how much that's filled in, go check that out. But Look it has the these little tiny quarter, half dollar sized blooms, but it gets dozens and here. dozens of them. And as you go up, like just There's so many buds, like it's going to be covered in blooms. Mm -hmm. We will get videos of that it's as so soon as they do. Mine is the same way, literally just hundreds of blooms we had to go find mom went a on a cruise she called me and she was like what do you want for a souvenir and i said obviously i want a rose if you're getting one i want one yeah so we're very excited to see if they cover the entire arbor but they're supposed to no when we planted them last year, they hadn't no bloom. had There's no blooms. Definitely blooms up here getting ready to burst open. And I mean, just all of these. I think by next week, when we come back, it's going to be phenomenal. And I want to see how long the blooms last for as well. And then, well, you have some, are these hookara? These are hookaras. And then here's mom's vitex. So if you saw my vitex over to the side of my house, this is what it will grow up to be. Yeah, and then... It's amazing the leaves. They're supposed to get much bigger, but this has been in the ground for a year. We put this in middle of last summer and it's grown this much. So if mine, mine is probably about this tall right now, half this size. So I'm hoping that mine gets this big or bigger in one season. I'll take it. But mom's is in way more sun than mine is. So... Yes. I have really good I need to put some compost around it because mine is in, mm. mine is not in my garden bed. It's right behind my garden bed. I want it to fill in and kind of be a backdrop for the garden. Yeah. So I need to, at the very least, put some compost around it. Now over here, I'm not seeing. This is kind of the tail back. end of the garden, and we're. She had three gumfrina. I'm not seeing those, mm. but the knockout is doing okay. That that poor little knockout tried to die. It did. It, it's it hasn't succeeded in dying, but it has but I tried. Back just, just last week, and it's it's looking good. And then the yes. cone flowers are blooming. Yeah, go I figure. And the butterfly bush over here is doing great. And then for some reason, mom has a basket of weeds that she's kept over here for at least a year. We don't know why. Do you like weeds, mom? I don't know why. It was kind of to hold down the, the cardboard. Cardboard hasn't been there in like a year. All right. But, you know, it's coming in. Everything's coming in. I'm really happy. So we will, we will probably, we will probably not do monthly garden tours at mom's house. Um, but maybe seasonally, spring, summer, winter, fall, who knows. 
back now. And I'm sure we are going to be doing lots more projects over here because y'all seem to enjoy them. And if I'm working over here, we might as well film it. Yeah. We just built mom a compost bin in the backyard for her birthday. And we are currently mulching. We use compost for mulch, but we call it mulching. Um, her entire back garden. So when that's done, maybe we will do a backyard garden tour because okay. we've never done one back there since she put that in prior garden blogs. Yeah, it was probably about five years ago, four or five years ago. Yeah, four or five years ago. So I was blogging about home stuff, but not garden yet. It was before I bought my house. So either way, we're going to go weed and mulch before the sun goes down. And then we'll probably wrap up the night with a season of The Bachelor. <laughs> Bye y'all. Bye. All right, before we go, we forgot. We wanted to talk a bit about these tree watering bags. So they are polyester and you can see we've got them around all of mom's trees that she's planted and the hydrangeas, things that need extra water. You can also put from the drip irrigation an extra drip tube to it, but these accept water as it rains or as the drip tube goes over them. It holds the water and then it just slow releases it all the time, steady release 24 seven, which for new trees that have just been planted helps a lot more than just water once a day. She's never had to refill it, to refill it, and this tree is doing so well. And it, it, you get them, and they have these, um, I want to say, little pellets in them. They're like, uh, They're like little gel beads almost. Gel be yeah, and you, you soak it in water before you put them on the tree. I'm sure it's they're... different, but it reminds me of the gel beads that absorb water in baby diapers. Yeah. Well, it's just the same thing as people get them, and they... They're what polymers mm -hmm. is what they are, and they put them in their plants. It helps to water their plants. And so it and just it. So you can you see them, they're completely flat. And Betsy will show you hers. Yeah, I need to hers, redo mine because uh, we put it in the water in a big tub, and we let the water stay in there for like. I left it in there for overnight. I usually do it overnight. I think it says online that it's a minimum of two hours, yeah. but usually I just do it at the end of the day and then by the next morning it's ready to go. And I got it on Amazon. Show them the thing. I'll put a link in the description. Smart 30 day watering bag. All and this isn't sponsored. Rain and slow releases as plant needs. They are great. Yeah. I'll leave a link down below, but this is just something we saw Laura from Garden Answer talk about. So I got some and then mom got some and, and they they're great. So, so I put them in and covered it with mom. Um, yeah, we, we kind of scraped it away so that y'all could see as. No. And you won't need them forever after certain amount of time, maybe a year or two. You could move it to another tree or another plant. You may always, in our southern climate, want to keep them around like a hydrangea or something that prefers water. Because my hydrangea last year was struggling. Until we got these. And then we, um, we were putting, I was putting a beach umbrella over it because the sun is just so hot down here. It's mm -hmm. strong. And so we put these and I haven't had to use the beach since. So I, my two little hydrangeas that died up by my tree, I'm going to replace that hydrangea and I'm going to put one of these around it. And I think that will make a big difference. Yeah. But we just wanted to show you before she recomposted because she copy. just refilled this. The dogwood tree that was here last year died. died. And so we just planted this pink one. This is its first time blooming right from the nursery and we're putting a ring around it to begin with. So hopefully it has a really strong start before the summer starts. Yeah. And we planted that in the heat of summer. And it's doing great. So, and like I said, I really, and then I put it in the 
and they come like they're like two for I think it was let me see Two for sixty-seven dollars. Not the cheapest thing in the world, but pretty good price. And, and it helps. I think I last time I bought four of them, it was one hundred and thirty dollars. Yeah. Well, and especially for something like your loquat tree, that was not an inexpensive tree. No, that, was not that is tree. that is definitely worth helping your investment. Things like your even the hydrangeas were not that inexpensive. Would I put it on every single bush in your garden? No. But your bigger foundation plants, if they need water, especially in places like the south, it helps. And usually there's just nothing around no. to keep it from getting There's no shade. Scorched. This is, it's overcast well, today. Uh, I get a little bit of shade from that tree across the street in the late afternoon. And that's, that's it. it. That's it. All right, we're going to go for real now. My whole yard was totally different after we took that giant nursery. Yeah, it went from shade, shade to Completely. all sun. Yeah. And these trees will shade eventually, but right now they're just all baby trees. So, is what it is. All right. All right. Bye, -bye. Bye for real.